And, and by the way, there's some cookies in the back, in the corner, if you want to, there's a chocolate chip cookie, only one cookie per person, no. No, I think there's enough for everyone to have two. Uh, that's supplied by our uh, friends at the Elk Grove Village Public Library who I'm grateful for inviting me. But briefly, I work full time as a photo retoucher. If you want to know more about me, look on the handout, website, phone number, in the back, I have a mailing list. I really encourage you to put your email and your name on there because every month I send out useful information and I don't sell it to any, sell your, your vital statistics to anybody. This is useful information about the subject we're talking about today. Photo restoration, retouching, scanning, color correction, organizing, digital organizing, etc. Some of you that were here last uh, session already know this speech. Yes? I was just going to say that Eric did a wedding certificate dating back, oh, yeah. um, well, I don't know, 70, 80 years for a friend of mine that was very unusual and it was split and it had cracks in it. And he did an absolutely fantastic job of this. Thank you. And I made a core, I made a a video out of it, a tutorial for other people to do it too. It's, it's, it's my advanced tutorial. It's six hours. <laughs> Imagine six hours listening to me tell you what to do <laughs> on Photoshop. Ah! <laughs> but thank you very much. And by the way, that's again, uh, that's Miss Eileen Carter from the Polish Genealogical Society of America. I did not pay her to come. She just showed up. Um, so please, uh, uh, definitely look up the PGSA, they're a great group, and I'm, I'm hoping eventually I'll get my honorary Polish heritage certificate <laughs> for all the times I've spoken there. It depends on how many pierogi you eat. Oh my God, I gotta eat the pierogies. Oh. <laughs> this vegetarian over here has got problems, I don't know. <laughs> if I can... You're right, you're right, you're right. I can, I can handle this out. A little... Yeah, I, can, I think I can handle that. Well, anyways, um, so let's get started. Enough about me. Um, your flatbed scanner is a great tool, okay? And right now, this is where scanning is going. It used to be you could get a, a, a scanner to uh, scan slides, and they do a real good job. Nikon made the best, but they stopped making them. All right, so now your scanners are all flatbeds, and they have attachments. And these attachments allow you to scan slides and negatives. But the brand is really important, okay? And I'm going to go over this briefly, and then we're going to talk. By the way, if anyone brought any originals, uh, I always like to work. I'd love, I, I, I bring my own samples, but I always like to work on audience samples. So if you did bring any, please bring, put them up here. Do not forget to pick them up when you leave. Um, I would appreciate that. And the most important thing for your scanner. Hey, wait, before I do that though, I, I know some of you have scanners. Does everyone have here a scanner? Raise your hand. If you don't have a scanner, raise your hand if you don't have a scanner. Aha. Uh -huh. So maybe you're shopping. You're going to be shopping, okay? My uh, scanner is a jewel. Ah, yes! And it goes beep every well, time you run the food over it. 29 cents of bread. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, if, if it works for, for if you just want to make pr copies, yeah, that's, yeah, that's perfectly acceptable. In fact, I recommend people do that. Um, but we're going to be dealing with scanners more as a whole tool, a whole set of tools that do different things, not just scanning something in to print it out, but rather scanning something to digitize it, to preserve it. And also maybe what to look for if we're shopping. Yeah, well that's what I'm, okay. first thing we're going to talk about here is the important features. All right, <coughs> and the most important thing is brand name. <coughs> brand name I'm big on right now. And it has changed over 10 years, you know. It's changed a lot. But uh, I put Epson as the number one brand for scanners. This is an Epson, right? And HP comes in second. And let me explain why. Uh, HP 
is very versatile and it's very easy to use. But I am not 100% satisfied with the quality of the scans. That is, when I scan a picture as a photo retoucher, as someone who works full time with images, making them look better, the detail is inferior. I see what is called artifacts. I see, I find it difficult to control the software. Okay, and there's, and as we get into working, you're going to see what I'm talking about as far as controlling the software. Um, even with a third party driver, anyone ever heard of a driver called ViewScan? V U E S C A N? Okay, I won't get into that. But even, my whole point is this even with using non HP software with an HP scanner, I cannot override the settings, especially for the all-in-ones. The all-in-ones are excellent HP scanners for your office, for business. They are good for scanning in documents. Uh, you want to scan a stack of papers from a workshop or that you have printed out for family records <clears throat> or receipts, old greeting cards, things like that that you want to archive and put away, it's very sufficient. I'm really satisfied with the HP All-in-Ones. But when it comes to making scans of your photos, Epson is the way to go. I'm not paid by them, although I should be for all the recommendations. Um, the, there's no other scanner I can recommend outside of those two. I have not used a Kodak scanner for since the mid 1990s, so I can't recommend it. Um, but if I'm, I'm going to tell you all this, if you already have a scanner and it's a Kodak or a whatever, a Lexmark or a Kmart, whatever, and it works for you, fine go ahead and use it unless you start to see the problems that I see and you say wow why do I have these problems it must be me and then if you after you leave here and you say wow it's not me it's actually the scanner then you have to get a new scanner um, yes and how about Canon where do they kind of stand Just... uh, you're talking about a Canon scanner yeah there aren't that many around but there are some Canon. I I don't uh, I don't know. Maybe they're not too popular. Yeah, I know back when for printers, the Canon inkjet printers were pretty pretty nice, uh, right up there to par with the Epson for, photos for photo prints. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, <clears throat> but but that's that's what I have to say now. When you're shopping for your scanner, there's really not much you need to know. The all-in-ones, and that when I say all-in-one, I'm talking about it scans, and it prints, and it probably receives fax too. If one part of that scanner malfunctions, let's just say the printer stops working. Generally, the scanner won't work either. <laughs> let's say the scanner stops working. The printer might not work. I've had this happen to me. I bought an Epson all-in-one uh, back in 2006, I think it was, 2005, you know, and that was a real bummer, you know, and I used it for demonstration just to teach with, you know, and here I am, I got to teach with this thing and I can't teach with it because <laughs> I wanted to be able to print and, and scan at, while teaching people. Um, I recommend a dedicated unit. And that, what I mean by dedicated, I mean it's dedicated to scanning. You know, just like those of you who are married, you're dedicated to your spouse. <laughs> so you should have a scanner that's just dedicated to scan. All right? Especially when it comes to your photographs, especially your family photographs. Because I guarantee you, quality really makes 
makes a difference. Um, now this part I, 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 I get into on the next, next tip, but I, I should mention it. I'm going to kind of mention things a little bit out of order. The next part that I think you should have is something that can take the film, 35 millimeter film, and slides. Especially if you have any 35 millimeter film or slides. This one, for example, has the flatbed. This is an Epson V500. Uh, V350, sorry, they don't make it anymore. The V500 is the, the modern version. And it has adapter for uh, 35 millimeter outside of it, outside of the, um, the holder, and then it has it with the holder. Very convenient. This is actually, um, yeah, right. Then if you get a more expensive Epson, this one may get something like this will cost you 150 bucks. If you get something about four or five hundred dollars, you'll have one that can do up to eight by ten negatives and slides. Four by fives and all those odd sizes. And it does a really good job. It's Definitely, like I said, it's good to put the money in to a good scanner from the beginning because it probably will stay with you for a long time. And I have a scanner, it's a, called a Microtech. They don't make it anymore. But it's a real workhorse for me when I do scans for customers. Now I will say if you have, does anyone here have artwork that they might scan? No? Okay, so I won't even mention that. Um, So the other thing that's neat that you can look for, not as important though, is being able to scan multiple types of images, is a removable lid. <clears throat> and I say that because, a removable lid, sorry, removable glass. I say that because on the, you can clean the front side of the glass, but how do you clean under the glass? <laughs> and you might say, why do I need to clean under the glass? Well, this is made of plastic, right? Plastic is always emitting gases. It's breaking down. It's a petroleum product. It's trying to become oil again. <laughs> and what it does is it, what they say, gas off, it gasses off and builds up residue on the other side of the glass. And maybe, has anyone ever seen that when you see the scanner and you see like a weird kind of sheen underneath? Well, well take a look next time the scanner lights on. You might notice that. Um, this is something that isn't going to ruin your scan, but it, it, it's one thing that kind of makes could cause us a minor problem, a minor inconvenience. The removable glass types are more expensive. This one, you won't find that. These are the lower end. And I use this for demonstration for, for classes when I'm teaching. <clears throat> yes? Are they, are they um, pretty easy to find, the ones with removable glass? And what yeah, what are you talking about as an average price? Is well, so so for the Epson, let's let's uh, let's just go online since we got an internet connection, right? That's all right with you. Um, let's go to Epson here, and I think we're in the USA. Um, I'm going to go to scanners over here, and of course you click and click and click and click, but pretty much follow the scanner. And I always like to click on the big ones, the large format. But these are quite excessive. You, you, you really don't need this unless you are working full time in something like this. You're, you're actually working with people, <laughs> other people who will pay you to make scams. <laughs> so let's go back. This is called the home and professional. So this is just the 
the other end. So here you go. So the V33 currently out of stock. They're probably just phasing that one out. V370, which is like this. But the one I'm talking about, the ones I'm talking about are up here. V600, I think that one is removable. We'll go to it in a minute. And this uh, 700, and then of course you go up to higher. So the V600 here, look at, they show you right here, it actually has a light bulb in the lid and it's got a light bulb in the base. The light bulb in the lid scans your slides and your negatives. The light bulb in the bottom scans your flat prints or documents. The software that comes with it is excellent. And they're all the same pretty much. All the Epson printers, uh, scanners use the same kind of software. Is this specific lid removable? It, I'm not sure. I can't tell you. But it's something to look for and you can always call them up and say, look, I want to be able to clean the glass you know, properly. Uh, can I do that? It's important to have a removable lid. Well, this part, when I'm talking about, when this comes off, if I can take this off, I can scan part of a book or something in a book a lot easier than I can oh. with this thing on. And it's, it's okay because this actually lifts up so that if you do have something thick, it compensates, but, but sometimes you, it just doesn't fit right. You really want to press hard without breaking things. Okay, so these are little extras. But the most important thing is up at the top, you know, and I put A, most important, is brand name and two, a dedicated unit. And the portability aspect is very nice if you happen to be going to someone's house and you want to scan their pictures or if you're at a library or you're doing research at an archive and maybe you can scan what they have there. Um, there's a neat little thing called Flip Pal and I don't have this on here. Uh, let's see if I, hopefully I don't come up with something. Yeah, you never get it right, do you? If, if you just do the URL. Um, yeah, good. So flip pal. I'm actually going to go to my website and I'm going to go to my blog because I know I can show you a picture right there. All right, flip. So here's a neat little device. This thing that you see on screen is this big. <laughs> it's, it's the size of a book, you know, a hardcover book. And you could put it in your backpack, your purse, your anything, just carry it around. Um, apparently, they fixed the software. They had a little software glitch um, that, that I wrote about in my review that would shrink, even though you scanned high resolution, when you stitch the images together, it would make it low resolution. And what I mean by that is because it's so small, you actually have to scan your images in parts. So you run, put the flip pal here to scan this part of the picture. It scans it, move it here, here, here. You could do a whole big map on a wall if you wanted. And then you put in your computer and you click a button here, click a button there, and it takes 10, 10 scans and puts them all together in one big image. It did a real nice job. But then I found that it was, even though you scan it at high resolution, the stitching software would make it at low resolution, which means if you had small details like words or eyes, little details in big images, they would disappear. <laughs> so um, I, I put an update in my blog on, on my website there. And you can, of course, email me if you're like, well, where was that article? And I'll give you the link. But um, uh, I think they fixed it. I hope they did. I don't have the flip pal. pal. It's something I need to, to definitely get. Um, 
So here's some things to consider when it comes to transparent originals. And what that means is negatives and slides. That's all I'm talking about. I'm not talking about prints. Okay, when it comes to transparent originals, flatbed scanners have been catching up with dedicated slide scanner quality. And what that means is having a scanner that just does negatives and slides, all right? Um, and I mentioned the Nikon Cool Scan. So this is a reason why if you do buy a new scanner, get one that can scan transparencies. I mean, even if you don't have any negatives, what if you get negatives from someone and they give it to you? You know, and these are valuable images. It would be nice to be able to scan the negatives instead of the prints, if you can get the negatives. I, I remember growing up and my aunt would say, oh, negatives, you don't need that. And they'd go in the garbage. You know, so I got all these faded prints wishing I had negatives. <laughs> so, um, the, the other thing is keeping, you, wouldn't, you would be surprised of how this affects your, your, uh, your scans, and that is your surface. Uh, clean, keeping the surface clean and being very careful about getting sharp objects on the surface. Even, even a button from your shirt can scratch it. You really don't want to scratch the surface because that's just more uh, of a, a distraction in the image, more things to clean up later. I want to show you also how you can find the best part in your scanner. Now every scanner, no matter which one it is, has what's called a sweet spot. That means the area where it makes the best scan. You can put it right up here to the corner. Actually that's not the best spot, especially if one little picture. All right. Usually it's somewhere in the middle. I'll show you how to find that out. And again, like I said, every one of them, even the brands, even if I got two different Epsons, they'd be a little different. And I hope to show you. Any questions about this? Yes? Did you, I think you talked last week, what was the tip, tip you gave us for cleaning, not last week, two weeks ago, cleaning the glass again, what could we use that sprayed as far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just water? Did you, or did you? No, Windex? yeah, I would use a, a, a high quality window cleaner okay. like Windex, you know. Okay. And, and spray the cloth. Yeah. And, and you know, you don't want to use just any cloth because you don't want to put more lint on it. It's just more stuff to clean up later. And as you scan more, you'll start picking up stuff. And you'll be like, man, I got to clean this up. Yes, Windex sir. Windex has ammonia. Yeah. What's that going to do to your glass? Well, if you wipe it off, it'll make it real nice and clean. It won't streak. Yeah, but I, I yeah. It's glass. Yeah, I understand that. It's glass, but it's I have not... the reaction between ammonia and glass. Really? Okay, so what is that? What is that? Cloudiness, maybe? Um, yeah, I mean, that ammonia pretty much oh, dissolves quick. Yeah, yeah I, it could be the mix that you have, the ratio of ammonia to water. That, that could affect it, you know, and, and, and cause problems. If you have a little eyeglass cleaner or lens cleaner, yeah. um, that's yeah. real nice. Costco makes a great one. Okay, Costco makes, uh, here we got a recommendation for a Costco lens cleaner kit. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so, you know, I do that. Uh, just make sure it's dry right. before you put anything on there, okay? And if you do spray it on the surface, just realize that it can get stuck in the cracks and just cause a lot of slimy things. All right, so let me wake up this scanner and, and we'll talk about the sweet spot. All right, mm -hmm. yes, go ahead. So typically then if, if something goes, something fails on the scanner, whether it's one of the light bulbs or the ribbon that's inside, typically do people need you would just send it back to the manufacturer yeah. or other places that will take it to. So. Yeah, unless you want to fix it yourself, and there's interest, there's all kinds of things online of mm -hmm. people who fix these things themselves, and they share how they do it. Your YouTube video, you'd be shocked. Um, but typically, something like this, if the bulb yeah. dies, you know, that's it. It's over. You can't 
it's over. And, and if it dies that fast, this is something defect. Hopefully it happened within the warranty. But it's not like you take it into Best Buy or Office Depot. You pretty much send it back to HP or Epson. Uh, uh, well, no, wherever you buy it, you know, bring it back. I would say okay. if you bought it at Best Buy, Best Buy should honor, will probably honor the, uh, the warranty or extended warranty. Uh, you'd have to call them up. Okay. Um, keep in mind, too, that the, the scanner bulb isn't on all day and all night. It's only on when you're scanning, generally, unless you like to leave it on. I turn the power off on my scanners when I'm not using them, you know, and my printer. I just don't want to be an energy hog. Yes? What's the average lifespan of a scanner? Just That's a good average, question. I don't know. I don't, I'm, you know I don't, it's not my job, but how yeah. long should I expect my scanner to, to uh, be good for me? Yeah, I, 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 I have no data for you, but here we have someone who says long, so what would that be to you? And I didn't, and it wasn't uh, gone. I just uh, got a new computer, and it wasn't compatible, so I had to buy a new scanner. Yeah, because the cable. <coughs> right. Yeah. But I mean, in yeah. six years. But yeah, still she'd going. still use it. She'd still be using it if it, you know, if the she didn't have that compatibility problem. See, that's the thing that'll get you. Compatibility. And, and, and the resolution is getting better. I don't know if you can get any better now because it's like, well, what else is there to see for, for, for detail in a scanner? So scanner technology, I think, is kind of leveling off now. Um, so now the big thing, your biggest problem is not going to be, is it going to last? Is it going to be compatible? If I upgrade on a computer or something like that. Right. I just saw something on... There's some new cable coming out now. You know we've had USB wire, fire wire, USB 2, some other new thing, cable coming. I'm like, no. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, yeah, yeah, well, good, That's make money, but geez. Next to reason. <laughs> Next to reason. Let's, you know. Is that that HDMI cable? No. no. This is something newer. This is like Aquaman or something. I, it's just outrageous, whatever they called it. Um, so, so I, I, I'll tell you that I have a, I have a scanner that I bought in um, 2000, and I still use it. That's my big one, my, my Microtech, and it's hardly compatible, but I know I can make it work. I, I make it work, you know. But it's it's a little. It always doesn't connect at first, and I got to turn it off, turn it on, and do it again. But that's it. Uh, yeah, you're, you're looking at least ten years, so I think that's that's reasonable. All right. So I woke up the scanner. Now this class, I mark this as an intermediate class. So we're going to do some things in Photoshop or Photoshop Elements that may be a little hard to catch. So. I'm, I'm not going to get too far into it, but I do want you to get certain aspects. So some things I do want you to catch. So if we have to go over it again, I have to tell you exactly what I did. I'm going to try to do that. So I, I have my scanner window here, all right? This is called the Epson scan. Every Epson comes with this. And when you first plug in your, who has Epson? Okay, so does your control look like this? Okay, there's something called full auto mode, and this is what shows up when you get it out of the box. This might look more familiar. Okay, then there's something called home mode, which is a little more, a little more detailed, and then there's professional mode. I recommend whenever you're scanning to have full control over what you're scanning, and it only takes a couple. It only takes a couple of things to know. Is that professional mode? Now? This is professional mode. I mean, does that give you the full control? Yes. Okay. Yes. And let me close this window here. My, my windows are disappearing. All right, let me quit this buggy here. Quit. All right. Now, I'll go over what's here. Document type, 
reflective. Again, all that means is I have a print. I have a tintype. I have a document. Film and film. These are transparencies. Auto exposure. That's the only auto thing I will tolerate with my scanner is just choose the one that you're doing. I'm at this at this stage, I'm doing a photo even though there's no photo on here. We'll get to that soon. Image type, we want it color. All right, you may see lots of choices. You just want color. Remember that, color. Color, color, color. Even if it's black and white, color. <laughs> if it's a document and it's just black text on white paper and it's not anything antique looking, you want to keep that parchment look, go ahead and do you know, grayscale if you want, or even black and white. Black and white is just like a Xerox copy, so going to have real harsh, blocky edges. But in this case, we're just going to do color. And of course, I choose 24-bit. We're not going to get into that. 24-bit is sufficient for what we're doing. Now, resolution. This is really important when you're scanning. I don't care if you don't think you know what you're doing or you know what you're doing. You have to be at 300 DPI. Now, technically, that's incorrect. It's not DPI. It's PPI. That's dots per inch. It's actually pixels per inch. Your scanner does not scan, does not make dots. It makes pixels, little squares of different color values. The size. This is also important. How big do I want this image to be? Some scanners may say magnification. All right? This Epson happens to call it scale. Just think scale up, scale down. 100%, at least 100%. And then you should add or more with a smaller original. Because you think about it, if I scan my 35 millimeter negative at, uh, at 100 percent size at 300 pixels per inch, it's still going to be small. How am I going to enlarge it to an 8 by 10, let's say, right? So you actually have to make the mag magnification higher. So that'll come out in 300? Yeah. Yeah, good. You now, lose detail because you're making it Not in the scanner. But after you scan it and then you want to enlarge it, like in Photoshop or, or GIMP or PaintShop Pro, oh, then you're going to lose detail. Scan big in the scanner. That's what your scanner's for. Scan big right there. Now, some people say, oh, well, I can scan at 600 pixels per inch or, or 1,200 or 1,600 or 10,000 billion and one. All right, whatever. You can do that if you want. But if you scale it up, you can visualize it better. I got a 4 by 6 print. I scan it at 100% size, at 600 pixels per inch. I'm going to be smart. Eric told me 300. I'm going to do 600. I'm going to crank it up. All right, fine. You've just made an 8 by 12 image. Thank you. Did anyone understand why? Well, because of the deep, it'll enlarge the, the DPIs. Yeah, the, the, it puts more pixels. It put twice the amount of pixels per inch into that image area that I'm scanning. So it doesn't really matter whether you want to do it at 600 or you want to scale it to 200%. If I take a 4 by 6 and I scan it at 200%, which is great, because then I can make it really big, all right? 200% or 2 times 4 by 6 would be an 8 by 12. I'll have a nice 8 by 12 with all the detail that was there originally. If I scan it 
but 600 pixels per inch, I'm still gonna have the same big image, but I'm not gonna be able to conceive it because I don't know what 600 pixels per inch looks like spatially. So I'm trying to get people to keep it simple. So then after you scan it and you've got, then it becomes an eight by 10, and then you go down back to your six by four if you want to print it? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, so scan big. And if you want to, you're like, why, Eric, why would I want to print that little picture at 8 by 12? Well, you don't have to. You just, in your photo editing program or your printing software, you just scale it down to the size you want and print it out. But you, trust me, you don't want to scan small. And people do that all the time. They, they, they follow the, the, the auto settings like this, you know, the full auto mode. And, and they don't know what they're doing. It just says scan. What am I getting when I'm scanning? So I want you all to understand two principles only right now. 300 pixels per inch and at least 100% size of size, 100% scaling, 100% magnification, at least. Now it gets real tricky when you scan at 72 pixels per inch and you scan, just scale, scan at 300. <laughs> and by default, your scanners are going to do 72. They all do that. I don't know why. It's crazy. I yes. I understand what you're saying. So when I bought my scanner, it said the scan resolution is up to 4,800 ah. by 9,600 DPI. I said, okay. wow, I can make a really crystal clear, sharp, large. All right. But it doesn't sound like that. Well, it's... That could come in handy if I... Okay, you said 4,800. 4,800 by 9,600. 9, they call it DPI. Here. Okay, here. This is what it is. This is the truth. Okay. <laughs> Take those numbers. When you buy a scanner or shop for a scanner, let's go back online. Let's go back online. And, and, and we're going to look at what um, the sales pitch is and what the truth is, okay? Because they love to tell you a lot of stuff. You know, it's like you buy multivitamin, 4,000% of your RDA for vitamin A. Oh, great. You know, well, no one tells you vitamin A is fat soluble and it's going to sustain you forever and build up. But uh, anyways, they just give us big numbers to try to make us excited. And it's, it's cruel. Um, so here I am at this Epson. This is a great example. But let's go with one that everybody, most everybody can afford. I want to go to. About the 600 or the 500, whatever. Let's do this one. Okay. Let's do this one. I think, was I here? Oh, no, I wasn't. Okay. So here we go. This is a, um, we're going to go to the specifications. Now look at this. Right here. Resolution. 6,400 DPI. What the heck? <laughs> Am I going to need that? Well, yeah, you are. But here's the truth. Take 6,400. Take the stated DPI. And divide it by four. 1600. I used a calculator so I wouldn't make a fool out of myself. But uh, that is the maximum resolution that you're going to get out of your scanner. That's all you can dream. You can't dream of a resolution higher than that. It's just not going to work. You said, but it says 6400. Well, that's on all four sides. It's 1600 here, 1600 here, 1600 here, 1600 here. 1600 here in a pixel, on, on your whole flatbed. And that's good, I mean, 1600, but let me explain why you need to understand that. Is because when we scan a negative, what did I say about a, a 35 millimeter negative? It's tiny, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think, this, at 100% size, what do you think the resolution has to be? It's got to be really high. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's where you use lots 
of DPI or PPI or whatever they want to call it. It's with small originals. You got an eight by 10 or five by seven print. I mean, you don't need it that big. You really don't. Even if you were gonna make a billboard out of it, billboards aren't printed at huge resolution. They just print them big. Because <laughs> people see billboards from far away. They don't go up to it. Let me, honey, let's park the car here on the Kennedy and look at this billboard real close. No, you look at it from the blocks away, <laughs> okay? So um, that's the truth about resolution. So I guarantee you, all the scanners you all have right now have sufficient resolution. I'm sure of it. Unless your scanner is from 1989 <laughs> with a SCSI adapter, some, I don't know how it could work on your PC, but it's fine. Your resolution is fine. Now, how does this relate to the original picture, which is in different megapixels? Oh, well, you're talking a different, you're talking a different dimension. Right. I'm yeah. So megapixels, that has to deal with digital images from your camera. Right. And I, I can't get into that right now. But, okay. but if, if, you have a, if you have a 10 megapixel camera, right. even if you had a 5 megapixel camera, you could make 11 by 14 prints and at 300 still, pixels per inch. And it would still be nice and sharp. Yeah, yeah. As long as you set the, but here's another thing is, I'm getting sidetracked now. Here's another thing is you get your scanner out of the, uh, your camera out of the box and you, oh man, I'm shooting lots of pictures at 10, what is, this says 12 megapixels, right? Well, you have to check the settings of your camera to make sure it's set for the highest resolution, okay? Otherwise, you're not getting your 12 megapixels of milk, okay? You're just getting six or three. Or I had a cousin say, oh, I got this new digital camera. I can take thousands of pictures. And I said, okay, email me the picture. And they were this small. <laughs> because she had it set on the lowest setting. So here's all these pictures of our children as babies, but they're this small. They're little babies. Yeah. <laughs> Baby pictures of babies. But you can't print those things. They're smaller than postage stamps. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and anyways, I, 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 I did want to mention that. And, and thanks for bringing up the, uh, what they call the optical resolution or the interpolated resolution. Sorry, that's what's called interpolated resolution. And that's also what it can expand to. So, and scanners will fake it. Scanners will naturally, when you tell it, give me a bigger scan than the original. It's gonna add pixels of similar colors to build the image up, but it, it's indiscernible compared to bringing it in photo, your photo editing program and enlarging it. That is trouble when you do that. Now, I do it from time to time, but it shouldn't be more than like 10%. You shouldn't enlarge it more than 10%. Because then it starts to show. All right, and especially if you're gonna put it in a publication. What makes a good scan? What is a selection? What are layers? What is resolution? What is a JPEG? What is TIFF? What is RGB? How do I crop a picture? What is a zoom tool? What is a clone stamp? What are levels? My name is Eric Basir, and I have produced this unique photo restoration and retouching foundations video course to answer all these questions and more. In my classes and workshops, I have taught hundreds how to preserve and restore their personal photographic collections with Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Photoshop Elements. Now you can have me as your personal instructor in this 10 lesson course. After studying the videos and easy to read workbook, you'll finish with a firm foundation of how to use Adobe Photoshop or any other photo editing program confidently and correctly. All right, so let's, uh, let's close this. I wanna get into the sweet spot. So let me wake up my scanner again. Any questions? All right, and see, I say wake up the scanner because what it does is it, it turns the bulb off. And 
So here's how you find the sweet spot for your scanners. I want you all to get this. And um, it's the concept, the method is explained in C2. But I'm going to give you specific steps for this Epson. And most of this can be translated to whatever scanner you're, you're using. So as with all scanner, there's a preview button or an overview button. And that tells you what's, here's the, here's the bed. This is what you're looking at. This is everything on the bed. I click and drag to tell it I want you to make a scan of the entire surface of the scanner. I've, I've made these marching ants extend. Now if all I was scanning was a tiny picture that was over here, I would do it like this. And this is tricky because I've seen people scan, there's like a little, what do you call it, a, a Polaroid here, in the, but they've scanned the whole bed. So there's all this white around the Polaroid. We'll get into that next. But anyways, whole bed, okay? Next, resolution 300, right? And uh, scale 100%. Now, just for demonstration purposes, please do not do what I'm about to do. I just don't want to be here forever while it scans. I'm going to cut the resolution to 150. All right. And I'm going to scan. And here we have our Elk Grove Public Library prefix. Wonderful. We'll get into this um, next, what all this stuff means. And what it's doing, it's, scan, it's, gonna, it's gonna scan the whole, the whole surface. So any questions while it's scanning? Nothing's in there, right? There's nothing on that bed. It's, it's white. You saw the white, there's nothing there. Not even a speck of dust. Well, yeah. Okay, so here is my file, it opened up. I scanned it to the disk and, and I have a folder specified for these scans for tonight. And I will open it. I'm, I'm hoping elements will open tonight. So let me ask you all, um, what, uh, what program do you all, we have a small group so you can just blurt it out, what program do you have to edit photos with? Photoshop Elements. You don't have one yet. You're probably going to end up with Elements. It came you don't with the scanner, actually. Came, yeah, yeah. The more expensive scanners, the more so, no, perks. Like really? But you have Epson. Yeah. 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 Epson takes care of its people, its customers. Anybody else have software they use? Paint Shop Pro, GIMP, anything? Okay. So you have to get some, and I re recommend Photoshop Elements. So even to just kind of don't worry so much about what they send you, because you'll usually get some with the, every scanner, but just elements would be the ideal choice. Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop Elements, you can get it for less than 100 bucks, and it has more than you could ever imagine you'd need. All right? And you can get it for Mac or PC. And, uh, but there's some other nice, Paint Shop Pro is uh, just like the big elements, and uh, the more expensive one, but it's a hundred bucks, but it's only for PCs. And it's really nice. It's really nice. And GIMP, is, there's free ones. So, anyways. So here is my scan of nothing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Enhance, Adjust Lighting. And you would do this in, if you had Elements. And by the way, Elements, you can... You can download it for, and try it for free for 30 days from adobe.com. What I do is I take these sliders right here, the black triangle, and I push it all the way in towards the edge of the mountain. And look what's happening to my scan. Now I'll, I'll, I'll help you interpret what, what is all that stuff. Believe it or not, this, let me extend this out here. 
these dots are from uh, staples, from a, a document or, a, or something that pressed down on the white here. <laughs> you're looking at a scan of the white, and you're seeing all the indentations. Now the dark air, oh, it, I, see I'm, I'm using a very old version of elements on this computer and it doesn't like it. So I like to show people in elements because most people get elements, but sorry, I gotta open it in Photoshop. But it's the same steps. Um, the dark areas that you saw are the areas of less detail. So when you scan something, you scan a picture or a document with some, some detail, there's going to be fall off on the <coughs> edges in that dark area. So let's, let's try this now. So elements, oh, what, what, what happened to you? OK, I guess it reopened. I'm going to yeah. quit it. Yeah. All right, so here we go. I'm in, I'm in Photoshop now. So let me explain this to you. This area, right up here, I would not put a photo up there to be scanned because there's not enough detail that will be captured. It will be lost. My sweet spot, and I'm going to use the paintbrush tool just to illustrate uh, what areas that is. And don't try to follow what I'm doing right now because that is not the point. Okay. Okay, so here's my sweet spot. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to have to just admit it. This is it too. It's strange as it seems. All those light areas, that's where I'm going to get the most detail. That's where image will be pressed down, flat to the glass. And the scanner will pick up. It's just, and you know, you can. <laughs> so. Well, no, because that's the, that's the. Because uh, it'll get covered by. Yeah, you're just seeing this plastic cover. That's all you're seeing. So as you're looking at that scan, the bed, the top is the top of the scanner. Um, you know what I'm saying? Y yes, 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 yes. Is it this whole thing? This is the whole thing. So you see, when they tell you put it up in the corner, mm -hmm. you you're gonna miss detail, especially if it's in this corner. All right. You you not only will you miss detail, but it'll get dark on that side of the picture <laughs> when you scan it. It'll get darker. So. So as we look at, at the image, yeah. as, yeah, as we look at the image on the screen, the, the upper part of the image, is that what you would interpret as the top part, you know, the part. upper part of your scanner? Uh-huh. Or are we looking at it upside down or, you know, because it's... I keep forgetting. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll do okay, this. We'll Here's a picture, right? What I do, what I did on the top of my scanner because I always forget which is the top. I don't care what they write on here. It just never makes sense to me. I put a little stick figure here, mm -hmm. the permanent marker with the head. Mm -hmm. That tells me that's the top. Is so I, I know the head. I don't want to have to flip it over, right? So is there, a little, is there a little grid or anything that you could? So you find the sweet spot, and you say, yeah. OK, I can tell it's one inch over. Yep. So you can pinpoint it. Can you do that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and you can pinpoint that, and, and, and um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and scan this. And um, what I do is I took some tape. I took a piece, piece of masking tape on my big scanner, and I put it there, so that tells me don't put stuff past that area. Okay, don't put, image, don't put an image there. All right, so... Um, this should be fine, you see, because that's the good area. She's okay. That, that person here, see? But if I go off to the right, 
So this is the top. We're, and by the way, that's where they tell me to put it. There's an arrow. Oh, okay. It says put it right there. That's yeah. So, you know, they don't mean to be bad or anything, but it's just... That way it keeps it straight. Yeah. They're thinking it's a photocopy or a Xerox machine. You know, it's, it's a different reality. I'm curious, what part of the street the bus? It's just the way the bulb is, is running. Think of it, the bulb, it's a cathode ray. So it's, it's, it's like a fluorescent bulb. Uh -huh. if, you, if you ever, you know, whenever you've looked at a fluorescent bulb kind of for a while without going blind, you see how it kind of pulsates yes. in certain areas? Yes. It's pretty much all that is. It's a fluorescent bulb in there. And it's, it's not always even. We should go to the moon. You'd think they could make a fluorescent bulb. They wouldn't do that. Oh, man. But, it, but, if, but then again, we saw those Apollo astronauts that the thing broke down, oxygen tank blew up, and they were using tape and yeah. rubber to yeah. <laughs> get the ship to land. So uh, I don't know if things are that great. <laughs> but. Um, Anyways, I just wanted to show you all that. Now, it's going to be hard to tell the difference, okay, frankly. But you can tell that with this print. But I've seen the difference with, uh, like, yearbook portraits. So you will have a yearbook portrait from, and the, the background will be dark. And maybe it will be a dark-skinned model, too. You'll see a fall off of dark off on one side. You'll see it, no doubt about it. So keep your sweet spot in mind for critical detail. I'm not saying it won't scan anything. Look, it just did. But keep it in mind, all right? All right, so let's, let's do some work. It's 8 o'clock. We're scheduled here till 9. And I don't want you all to fall asleep while I find sweet spots. And if you have a sweet tooth, we do have some cookies. This whole thing about image size, by the way, that I was talking about, um, I have a whole lesson on it in my course. And when you're done with it, you'll start to understand it better. So, but, I'm sorry, if you have an 8 by 10 say it's going to take up your whole scanner, yeah. you're going to get something other than the sweet spot, right? Um, yeah, but the glass is always bigger than an 8 by 10 So I think I have one. Mm. This is a naturalization. I think this was 8 by 10 I mean, there's plenty of space around it. Plenty of space. Oh, so I'm going to take my business card here, and I'm going to turn it upside down, and I'm going to put it here as a buffer, because I want to keep my print kind of straight, if possible. But I want to keep in mind my sweet spot, right? So, and of course, the picture is curved up, so it's, it's going to be crooked anyway. So let's preview. Now we're going to do a picture. Now I want to talk about a little more details about scanning a, a picture. Um, so in, in part two of the first page, I talk about single photos and multiple photos. <clears throat> And on step, we've already discussed scanning in color. And we don't scan black and whites in color, right? Or do we? We do. We do. Ah, very good. Everyone knows. We do scan our black and whites in color. And we talked about this last week or the week before. Simply put, you'll get more detail. You'll get three channels of color detail as opposed to one. That makes a big difference for detail in the dark areas, the shadow areas, as well as the highlight or the bright areas. Um, look at that, right in the middle. Now, what is these, these marching ants? This is my crop. And I'm cropping in the scanner and adjusting this way. Not only if you do this this way. Now, is this picture supposed to be here? No, all the way up. up. This is just, just it's special for you to show me how you craft this. Yeah, yeah. But we don't have to scan this little section no, no, down no, no. here. That's not important. Okay. All right. So um, 
I like to do a little bit off of the print. And I'll show you, let's see if I can let you see. So see those marching ants, they, I could crop in, but why do that? In, in my photo editing program, I can crop out the white later. It's better when you're scanning, give it a little more space. Just a little bit. All right? Now, resolution, 30, right? 3,000. 300. 300. 300. Yay! 3,000. 300. One more, one less zero. 300.0, zero, that's what I meant. Um, scale. 100%, at least. So, when I say at least, that means, why not give it some more? <laughs> okay? So, for, for what I would do with a small picture like this, I would put in 200. And then what's nice about this scanner software is it tells me, well, the target size, that means the finish, what it's going to be when it's finished, is going to be eight, about eight and a half by eight and a half. And what is the original? It's about four and a half by four and a half. Now, for demonstration purposes, to save time, I'm going to put it back to 100. Now, <clears throat> There's all kinds of interesting settings here. Trimming, I keep forgetting what trimming is and how it works, but I never had to turn it off. And when I did look it up, I'm like, why would I turn it off? So in it's Epson, always defaulted onto the on. it's always defaulted to on. I've never turned it off. And I, I think there's a purpose for it. And what I do is I, if I'm not sure, Epson has the little help button you click on it and trim. When trimming is set to off, you can change the orientation and you can change the orientation. Da, 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 da. All right, so trimming, trimming. Ah, trimming, I just passed it. Previous. Trimming. Okay, next, I passed it again. So you can specify whether the document size or the target size is a given preference when determining the output size. When you select off, the document size is given preference over the target size. Ah, therefore changes in the target size are based on the ratio of the document. Oh, blah, 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 blah. okay. Just leave it on. Uh, you can adjust all that stuff they were talking about if you do what I said and just set your crop, crop marks 100%. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, now here's the fun thing that people love to play with, and they get stuck in this all the time. And I say, don't get stuck in it. Stay away from it, is adjustments. These, all these adjustments, you know, re just don't do them. If you do an adjustment here, you know, and you wow. start doing things, and like, oh, yeah, making the color look better now. Oh, wow, look at that, she's so green, you know? And you oh, that's not right. Do all your color adjustments in the photo editing software. Don't do it in the scanner. No, no fine adjustments. Unless you really know what you're doing. <laughs> and if you do, that means you've been working it like I have been working in it. <laughs> and then you and I can talk tech talk. <laughs> but uh, I don't think y'all need to worry about that, okay? Unsharp mask. That means sharpening. Never, ever turn that on in the scanner. <laughs> okay, it doesn't sharpen the picture. <laughs> Why is there? Because they... They think you're getting more than... If you, yeah, if you're technical, like, like I said, if you're like me, you, you might need it. But I really discourage it. Why sharpen now? Sharpen when you're in the photo editing much later. And the sharpening doesn't sharpen. It, it only builds up contrast between light and dark pixels, giving you the illusion of sharpening. If any of y'all have looked at fine art, paintings, if you've ever noticed, the artist can make a subject pop out of the picture simply by painting lighter colors around the subject. Maybe even a white halo. A little white glowing halo, and it makes, oh wow, right away your eye goes right to them. That's, that's where this comes from. That's the same concept. It's not really sharpening. Okay, de-screening. Descreening, and I hope to get it to it tonight, is only applicable 
for printed originals. And what I mean by printed originals is newspaper articles. All right? And, of course, I have an image from a newspaper. And, and you'll see why you need to do it a little bit later. But don't worry about that for your photos. Your, like your, your negatives, your prints, if it wasn't printed on an offset press, you don't need the de-screening filter. If, it doesn't, if it's not an image made of dots, that's what I mean by offset press. You look at an offset press, right? It's like a bunch of dots. Okay, that's not a continuous tone image. That's not a real photo. It's just a collection of different value colored dots. Your photograph, like what we have here, is a continuous tone image. It does not need de-screening. And de-screening will only blur it. So if you happen to be scanning an original, you're like, God, this scan is blurry. Oops, I just... You say, oh, this, this is a blurry scan. Check to see if you got the de-screening filter on. If you do, it's probably making your picture blurry. All these other things, dust removal, backlight correction, color restoration, off, off, off. Now, let's go to scan. Here, now, Epson has something similar. If you can find the, the command, where you can tell it where to save your original. Now, if we're scanning, let's say we're scanning a whole collection of images. And we have organized these into a group, vacations, or 1980s, or 1950s, or whatever way you've grouped the images. Give it a prefix, a file name. I have EGVPL, that means Elk Grove Village Public Library, with a hyphen. And the start number, what that means is the first scan that you do will start with that number. It, it, I'm sorry, it will have that number in it. I have kept the scans from our last session here at the library. And if you look up here, just give me a second, let me just hide something so it doesn't confuse you. So if you look here, you'll see 001, 002, 003, 004. I have not typed these file names at all. I didn't have to sit there, uh, let's see. <laughs> you know, I didn't have to type it. It did it for me. This is a great way to save time when you're scanning. Image format. This is very, 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 very important. You know, I told you about 300 pixels per inch and 100% size. Not only that, but the journey doesn't end. It's in your handout from last week, but some of y'all weren't here. So if you want, you can email me and I will, I will give you that handout. But TIFF is the file format of choice. You should be scanning your, all of your pictures in TIFF. Not JPEG, not PDF. I will give an exception for PDF, uh, documents. So if you're scanning this scan Scanning 101 handout, go ahead and do it as PDF if you want. That's fine. Portable document format. That's appropriate. But PDF is not appropriate for prints like this in negatives. JPEG is not. And as we discussed last week, simply put, the JPEG makes a smaller file, but not without sacrifice of detail. And I will show you on screen what it looks like when you save as JPEG. So let's uh, finish scanning this. Oh shoot, I bumped the thing. 
I'm so animated with my hands, you know. Excuse me. Any questions? Let's try it again. What is this? Firefox. <laughs> All right, good. It, it, it's talking to the scanner, it sounds like. Good. All right, finally. Let's try it now. Scan. Okay. Okay, good. It's scanning. So any questions while scanning? All right, so TIFF is, is, is a format that will s maintain the quality of the scan. So whatever quality of scan you made, whatever your HP or your Epson or your Canon gives you, TIFF will preserve all of that information. JPEG will compress the information as far as color ranges. It will average out some of the colors. Most of the time you won't notice it unless you keep opening, working on it, saving it, closing it, opening it, working on it, saving it, closing it. That process makes it degrade very fast every time you open, work, and save a JPEG. TIFF, you can do it all the time. Just keep working on it, saving it, closing it. And it won't change the quality. <clears throat> so let's take a look. I'm going to open it. And, all right, open it in Photoshop. So the neat thing about, oh, this is a, uh, this is actually a copy photo of something that was printed with a de-screening filter, it appears. This was actually a good scan of something that was already printed. This is, where did you get this? This is, uh, what's her name, Jamie? Jamie Curtis. Jamie Curtis, is that it? Jamie, Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis, yeah. So is this from a? Joel Oscar. But I'm saying, where'd you get the original? It's uh, from a magazine. Oh, there you go. I, I did it special for you. No, I first time here. I yeah. thought you, you can do because the sign is not full. You need to finish the sign. Is that possible? Or, like yeah, or? yeah, but that's not for today. That would have been last week, last session. Uh, We're just uh, doing scanning. Yeah, and I did the other things. I, you know, I'm first time about that. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, but she's nice, anyway. Yeah. So, so, but this was a good scan from a magazine because there's no uh, real strong patterns in here. So this was a good scan. But um, okay. So file. But, but going back to the, you can do the artwork. You know, if you want to write the scanner, I mean, it's finish no, no. the sign. No, the oh, oh, you want to like rebuild the build out right. the sign? Yeah, That's yeah, you can do that in your photo editing program, but not your scanner. Okay. Any scanner that claims to do that is got to be joking with you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to do it. It's hard work, but we practice. You get it done. You can do it. Okay, okay. so let's go to JPEG here. I'm going to resave this as a JPEG. And um, I want to zoom in close just so you can. Ah, I got to get a little closer. This might be hard to see. I'm going to do a JPEG here. Save. Okay, now it's, this is a great way to illustrate. Now, here is the maximum quality JPEG. Now, if I drop it, to the low quality. Look at what happened. Can, can you see a difference? Yeah. Yes. So before, after. You say it's pixels. It's pixelated. All it's done is. Your DVD goes haywire. That's like, yeah, yeah, yes. It's compression. And a DVD is nothing but compressed video. It's compressed raw video. So your your picture here with JPEG, I'm showing you the extreme of saving as JPEG. <laughs> but if you, if, let me tell you, your scanners that save as JPEG, they're not saving as the default 12 qu maximum quality. They're usually around 10 to 7. And you still, it's hard to tell the difference. But believe me, you don't want it to go in that direction at all. It's just not a good idea. All right. So choose twelve. Choose TIFF. Choose, 
No, but I mean the quality options. Well, why, why would you? OK. Oh, no. If, if you have to save a JPEG, save as 12, unless I have to put this out here for you. If you want to email someone a picture, you can't email them a TIFF. Their email read, may not read it. It may be huge, yeah. right? It's got to be a JPEG. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? I'm stuck, right? I'm like, ah, oh, Eric, too bad. I got to make, what do I, someone, anyone. What do you do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One is a TIFF and one is a JPEG. Yeah, there you go. So make your TIFF, save that copy as a JPEG, and make it whatever quality you want. They may not care. Attach it, send it, delete it. It's that easy. Okay? Aren't you glad you stayed here tonight? I am. She was going to leave. She said, oh, we, he's, he's not talking about what we need to know. I said, no, you, you should. You, it's, it's free information, you know. <laughs> so if you go home today, you, you learned one thing, right? It's I'll be back on doing photos. I haven't done them in a long time. See, see. Yeah. So exercise those photo muscles, <laughs> okay? So they don't get flabby. Well, how about when you go into, like I'm doing it the lazy way now. Uh, if I just take my picture and send it to Walgreens. You're limited as to what Walgreens will do for you. Or if I send Okay, what do you mean? You're taking your picture and sending it to Walgreens. You're taking a digital photo? Yes. And you, you, you send it to Walgreens and have them print it? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh -huh. What I'm concerned about is what are you doing with the photo that's on your camera? Delete it. Well, <laughs> delete it? Oh, you're kidding. Okay, he's joking, everybody. Please put your chairs down. Um, <laughs> no, I would save it, but probably in JPEG. You know, I'd save the whole Okay, let me, let me say something about that, okay? Your digital cameras, like this one, may only save as JPEG. Yeah, I think so. Okay? They may not let you save as a TIFF. And if they do save as a TIFF, they probably are JPEGs and then it converts it to TIFF in the camera. So your only way to get the best quality digital camera is to have a camera that shoots what's called RAW. Raw, R A W, and that's a, it's, a, it's a, like a format of non formats, but you get the best, best, best quality with that. But if you save it as it comes off of here as a JPEG, then you archive it, you save it, you back it up as a JPEG. Right. The, the the problem is when you open it, you work on it, you know, right. clean up the red eye or something or stray hairs, save it, close it. Uh -huh. Every time you do that, you bring the quality down. Uh -huh. Okay? So if you're going to work on it, save it as a TIFF. Work on the TIFF. Okay? And you end up with two copies, but, but I'll know the difference. you know the difference. Okay. And hopefully you're not saving everything to your hard drive and that's the only place where the images are. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That'll be another class. But, uh, <laughs> okay. So, um, I scanned this one, all right, we got a decent scan, all right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close it. I want to talk about, we were, we were talking about uh, printed images, and this is actually a copy of a printed image, actually, which is cool, and then we have some negatives there, too. Um, so let's get this shot, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. When you scan a printed image, text, it's, it's not a problem. But when there's an image with text, there's a problem. So let's talk about that. Any questions? So is this is okay for everybody? You're hanging in there? All right. All right. And I gotta move this over. All right here. This actually came from a newspaper, and I don't know who it is, but um, it's an obituary photo. And let's look at our settings. So let's talk together. 
So we're going to scan in color, right? Good. Our resolution is 300, right? Our target size is 100%. But this is kind of small. One and a quarter by... So I'd say go 200. And just for today's class, we can do it because it's not going to be too big. Now, let's scan it. No filters. Save as TIFF, right? And it's going to scan it. We're going to open it up and we're going to look at it. And then we're going to scan one with the de-screening filter. Now sometimes your, your, your scanner software may not say de-screening. It may say original. And you cho have to choose something. And so you might have to say newspaper or magazine or something like that. And now let's go here. And we're going to choose de-screening. See this checkbox here? And I want, to, I, want to, I want to say newspaper, 85 lines per inch. With that, with that that's printer terms. So that's telling you there's um, newsprint is almost, uh, because newspapers, because newspaper is a kind of tissue paper like paper. It's not very strong. It's kind of, <clears throat> ink really soaks through it. Okay, they have to do at 80, five lines per inch. Now if you have fine prints in magazines, the paper's coated, it's thicker, they do higher numbers. I don't know why, th there's not too much difference between the three as far as the de-screening filter, but generally uh, if it is a magazine, I go to 133. Now fine prints, you may have um, a, a print like that that you bought. It's not an original painting. These are original paintings, but to mass produce these, they make, they put these on an offset press. You would scan it. That's where you choose fine prints. And if you have a coffee table book with big, beautiful photos, fine prints, but generally, magazine will be sufficient. Newspaper, let's go with 85. If you do more than 85 for a newsprint, it might be more blurry. You're, you'll see. Because it is going to blur it a little bit, but it's, it's really much better than how it is without the filter. And some scanners, like the one you did at uh, Walgreens, is that where you took your print, sir? Uh, Jewel Osco. Jewel Osco. Uh, that, that one looked like it did auto de-screening. So that's a real nice printer. OK, so let's open these two up in Photoshop. All right, so I want to get close. Okay. A little closer. This is the plain old scan. And you see what I'm saying about dots? It's not a continuous tone image. Now, when I zoom out, I'm not satisfied. It's hard to tell here. But you actually, when you look on screen, not only do you see the dots, but you see a checkerboard pattern. Look at her forehead. It's a fine checkerboard pattern. There's a, you'll see diamond shapes by her right eye. It's, it's very, strange looking. Now when we go to this one, okay, it's much smoother compared. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now it's blurred a little bit, it's blurred, but it's smoother. So if you wanted to make a nice print from this, or a better print than the original, you, you, you would de-screen it. <clears throat> the problem with not de-screening from the beginning is it's very hard to make it look better later. So I recommend de-screening from the beginning. 
So let's get close here. And the lighting is not so ideal, but I, I, I don't want to be completely in the dark. But again, here, did I do the same size? Yeah. There we go. I mean, look, this is the original. I mean, it's, it's very distracting, all those dots. Yeah. And they make weird swirling patterns at different zooming in and out. So again, when you're scanning printed materials, you got to use the de-screening filter. Any questions? I skipped negatives and slides. I don't want to do that. Now, if we have multiple images, the nice thing about Epson and I believe HP, let me show you. We'll take her away. Let's put this one back. Let's put one of my samples. Okay. Let's say I've got two, three, four images. It's so much faster if you scan more than one image at one time. Then lift it up, put it down, lift it up, put it down, you know, each time. It, it's just, it's a real pain. And you'd like to do multitask maybe. Maybe you'd like to do some other work while you were scanning. This is a great way to go about doing that. But are you sacrificing? Well, I'm still in the sweet spot, you understand? I'm not saying fill the bed with every open space with an image, but, you know, put some in there, you know. So here, let's just say we got three images here. They're all basically in the sweet spot, okay? So here we got this one. Sorry. So with Epson, you take a marching ant, the first one, and adjust it. And then you just click and drag where you want another marching ant outline. Here's a second one. And here's a third one. And it disappears when you go to the next one. It didn't disappear. No, I mean it doesn't show. Uh, the, the, right, but, but you do see a, a, do you see that black outline? No. Right here? Oh. See that black line? Yeah. So when I click on it, uh. it's activated. Now because I have, I've set three different boundaries for three different scans, I gotta make sure my settings are the same for each one too. So let's click on the top one and check our settings here. 200%, yeah, see too much. At least for tonight, <laughs> 300 DPI. Okay, now let's click on the second one of Miss Curtis. Let's say I don't want that sign. That's like, ugh. I just want this, and and I'm gonna make it family friendly. And I crop like that. But now it's way too small. So I want this to be 200 percent. No, I want this to be 150. Now this one down here. I was told this is actually going to be printed on a banner this big. So I want to make this one 400%. So it's going to be 17 inches wide. So notice, now, let me click on Ms. Curtis. Look at the settings. Now I click on this other person. His, his name happens to be Curtis. I click on that, 100%. You see how the settings? are set for each one specifically. Mm -hmm. So this is a really cool feature. And what the heck. Just to show you that anything can be done, we will also do that one. Any questions? Yes. Is this just an Epson feature or is it an HP? HP can do multiple. I think it does it automatically pretty well. Yeah. But I've, it depends on the settings. Yeah. You know? And I don't do a whole lot of photo scanning. Yeah. I mostly just archive things uh, that are not photos with it. So, 
Let's set it on here. Oh, she's upside down. All right. So I should be able to adjust that here too, right? Oh, I don't remember. I always put it the right side up. <laughs> but uh, anyways. Yeah. Deselect. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Anyways, so here we go with four scans. Now let me change this one to be a little smaller because that's really ex it's really excessive. And I want you to see it work and we'll talk while it works. And she's... 100, 100, great. Now what I do is I click, shift click, shift click, shift click. And as you see now, everything has outlines or marching ants. I hit scan. It gives me the next number, because remember the last scan I did was 009 it's automatically changed the number to 010 and hit OK. And now the scanner, I can sit back and do whatever I got to do while it scans four pictures and it's telling you it's scanning one of four right now. I have a question. I know you had description when it was on newspaper. The other ones were on originals? Or what was the other ones on? They were regular photos. Is that what you mean? On the scanner? Yeah. They were all photos. The other one, oh yeah, I forgot to put de-screening. Too late now. I should have done that. I wanted to show off, you know, what you could do, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, so let, let, let's uh, let's talk about. Uh, file naming is is really interesting. Um, did you ever have a bunch of pictures and they had file names that you didn't like? You wanted to change them? Maybe they all said picture one, picture two, but you wish they said something a little more <laughs> useful. <laughs> uh, Adobe uh, uh, Photoshop and Photoshop Elements come, come with something called uh, Organizer. Elements comes with some, the new Elements comes with something called Organizer, Photoshop, has something called bridge and this is a great thing it's it's a photo viewer and it allows you to batch rename files in an instant oh. it's really useful uh, it can be very useful as opposed to sitting there manually typing in all the names uh, it's a real pain so look at here below just to show you all here's all our scans everybody's done all the scans are done. Well, I was talking.